Forbes had posted a, 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 an article saying corporate education will never return to the classroom. And Greg uh, had written here, I'll read it to you. I can't help but disagree. While online tools for learning have aided in the crisis landscape we're in today, nothing can replace value driven from in-person face-to-face learning. You can't compare the impact of real human interaction when it comes to education. And I'm hopeful that there'll be a soon a safe return. That's what Greg had written. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a troublemaker. So if you can read the bit at the bottom, you'll see my response was, nah, third generation digital is better than face to face. Have you tried it? Only then can you be certain of your assertion. So I wasn't actually <laughs> expecting Greg to come back with anything. And he comes back and he says, he says, I'm not really a, a familiar with this. I hope you're well. Uh, but I've seen a lot of research, blah, 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 I believe. So he carries on with beliefs. Guys, you have no idea how it's going to be, how difficult it's going to be to get people to change their old behavior to start to collaborate. Um, uh, is it just me or you, you could just see the whole thread here uh, and I just put a smiley. I'm being too Did you, here. No, no, because I'd, I'd have gone, I'd have probably gone back when I was in my um, argumentative mood and just going, <laughs> it's only because you've got a business and you'll be out of business if people don't come and sit in those chairs. Yes, yeah. it's true. So he has something to lose. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah. do I, because I used to teach in this environment, but I'm a bit lucky because I also teach on Cube. So this is quite important and you're absolutely right. It's about us as people and the story we tell ourselves. So what I want to do is I want to explain very quickly how human beings are designed, why collaboration is so difficult and how you guys need to use it and how you might have used it in form your quints uh, when you came to try and um, actually deliver your session. So I'm re really not that interested in the actual cube discovery. I want to talk about how to make quints work. So here we go. That's fetching. That's never good, is it? There we go. Collaboration. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to use the word collaboration, but I'm going to define it, if that's okay with you, because it has been such a fashionable word for so many years. Yeah, we're, we're involved with the collaboration with one of our partners. Have you seen people saying things like that? Okay, so that's what they tell us, uh, and everyone says it's it's working together. No, that's teamwork. We have a word for that already. It's aligning and helping each other. No, that's coordination or cooperation. We already have words for that. It's engaging with lots of people. No, that's networking. So what the beep is collaboration? Please answer us on a postcard. Shout. You can type into the cubicle chat. Any ideas? Thoughts, no shouting. Working Can I go together with mine? to achieve more. That's like good teamwork. <laughs> Can I can I try mine? Do you know where collaboration came yeah. from, which we stole? In the old days, scientists would share their documents, share their research, share their calculations and their maths, and then they would comment on each other's stuff. In the old days, when scientists used to collaborate, it was about thinking together. It wasn't about working together. I want us to use that as the way of trying to move forward. Thinking together is where we as human beings win. And I'm going to explain to you why you as super users stand between the human race and extinction. This is an old bubble diagram. You guys know how to read my bubble diagrams already. I made this for a client about 2013. They were talking about online collaboration, OLC. Ah, OLC uh, loses momentum. Why? Because people aren't interested. Why is that? Because people insist on face-to-face. -face. Why is that? You can read it through here. There's no compelling reason. You can see. So this client was trying to do this online collaboration. It was a disaster. At the bottom were things like nobody wanted to do it. They weren't ready. The teams weren't interested. No, they didn't know how to do it. No, no spin casting, nothing. They didn't have any tech for doing it. And the senior guy said, you guys go and collaborate. We'll just watch you. So this is classic. Does anyone recognize this? If you recognize it, you're allowed to type into cubicle chat or you can nod wildly and I will see. Okay. So a question, a really important question here understanding human beings. I'm going to pick somebody at random who I know will be able to help me, I hope. And can you see these two images? I can indeed. Tell me about them. So uh, we have an ice cream cone um, filled with uh, what looks like vanilla ice cream, uh, <laughs> which is a, a, a very uh, similar image to the one on the right, which happens to be a, um, a very modern day light bulb, uh, low energy, but high light emitting. 
both being yeah. held by a hand, mm -hmm. both being outside. Uh, one looks like it's in a town, one looks like it's out in the country or maybe in a park. Mm -hmm. Tell me um, uh, uh, Grey skies on both of them, possibly <laughs> um, a bit sunnier on the right-hand side. Any, re uh, any reasons for these images, do you think? Uh, they're very, they're very similar. So people um, will categorise them. Although they're incredibly similar, people will uh, summarize, um, identify them because of their previous knowledge. So they have knowledge of what an ice cream cone looks like and what a light bulb looks like. And although the light bulb is somewhat unlike any other light bulb, it actually looks more like an ice cream cone than it does a light bulb because it. Um, people's categorization in their heads will be working on their memory and previous experiences they've had. Well done that man. Did everyone follow Martin's description and story and explanation of the previous explanation? Did you hear me using the words because you see one of the things which happens is we are storytelling animals. You give people stuff they don't just they don't just go, go meh you know if you put these two things in front of a crocodile it would go can i eat them no i don't care but a human being tries to extract meaning it's indoors it's outdoors it's held by hand i wonder what that means are you with me storytelling animals there's a reason we're storytelling animals because it keeps us alive you're dropped two and a half million years ago into a forest late at night by yourself with lions and tigers and noises and, rah, 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 and stuff like that how are you feeling shout how are you feeling great Great! Scared. You're, no, scared. you're scared. Yeah. Great. Scared. You're scared. You're scared. You're scared. Exactly. Why is you scared? Because you might get eaten. So why don't you just lie down and go, well, you know, the odds are against me surviving. I, I guess as long as the end is easy, I don't mind. Why don't you just do that? Because your story doesn't end there. We're storytelling animals. You've told yourself how wonderful you are, how you're going to move forward, how you're going to bring your family, you're going to escape, you're going to bring your kids up, you tell them this great story. The whole story of your life is part of you. Storytelling animals, we have this thing called an ego. The ego tells us a wonderful story about ourselves. This pawn has become a king or queen. Why? Therefore, it must not die. It must continue. The ego keeps you alive. It gives you continuity into the future. Really important for going on, getting stuff done. And it's nonsense. First person, I'm going to choose here randomly. Please, Christine, can you read out these words as fast as you can, just so we can see how fast you can go. Yellow, blue, orange, black, green, uh, black, red, green, purple, yellow, red, orange, green, black, blue, red, purple, green, blue, orange. Bravo! Yellow, blue, orange, black, green, purple, yellow, red, orange, green, black, blue, red, purple, green, blue, orange. Bravo! And now, Joseph, can you read these out? But instead of reading out the words, can you read out <laughs> the colour? Wow. <laughs> brain training. Um, <laughs> so green, red, blue, yellow, blue, black, red, blue, <laughs> green, black, red, yellow, green, blue, black, blue, I like red. the way you slowed down. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, well, like it. Ready <laughs> first minute, yeah. So, well, does, anyone, very good. does anyone know why wow. you, you're reading it at two different rates if you're doing words versus colours? How you train your yeah. brain. Two parts of your brain. You've got a left brain and a right brain. Who knew? And they're in conflict. Who knew? Who knew? Your ego tells you you're one person. But it's not true. You've got two brains. If people have had surgery where their nerves are cut between the two things here, they can draw different diagrams with different hands. And if you cover one eye and say, what's the other hand drawing? They have no idea. They're two CPUs, two processing units. Your heart, you don't tell your heart, beat in, beat in, beat in, out, out, out. You know, you don't give it instructions. It has its own little mini brain. Your stomach has its own little mini brain. Your diaphragm has its own mini brain. Are you with me? These are all separate unit operations with chips built into them. But somehow you think you are one person. Total illusion. But that ego is so important because it keeps you alive and it tells the story of you. It's important. But for it to be able to tell a coherent story, it has to play all sorts of tricks. And this is why collaboration is difficult. Have you ever bought a car? And all the time up until you bought the car, you couldn't see the car on the road. You buy the car and every other car is the same car. Has that happened to you? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Why does that happen? Do people hide and the moment they see you, they get the car out of the garage and drive around like crazy people? Of course yeah. not. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that must yeah. be the explanation. Yeah, yeah that's the sure. only answer. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> what happens is this is thing called confirmation bias, this little ad, um, cartoon. Let's begin the meeting, but be aware that I'm documenting your bullying behavior. 
I'm not close to being a bully, but your confirmation bias will make you everything I say sound like bullying. Can you repeat the part after you implied that I was a delusional witch? It's a joke, but the reality is, as human <laughs> beings, whatever you think before you start, it then colors everything else you see. And you can't help it, but that's good because it means you don't have to change the backstory. And reality can be changed to fit the story where you're still the hero. You got that? This is important. Um, has it ever happened to you that you've been sitting chatting with people and you're talking about something and then you say something and somebody says, you always behave like that. So what you're assuming is that everyone should only work on cube. They should never meet again. Have you heard people saying things like that? Often with that emotion and absolute, etc. What they're doing is you've told them something which doesn't match their own story. And so the brain has another trick where it basically does like a software patch. It hallucinates what you said in order to say that you're wrong so it can continue to be correct. Did anyone know this? It's called cognitive dissonance. It happens all the time, daily. And now I've described it, you'll see it everywhere. Another cartoon. Why should I hire you as a consultant? I use my special process of cognitive dissonance to improve employee morale. How does that work? When people are uh, in absurd situations, their minds make it comfortable by telling them lies, basically. And he goes to this poor employee and says, isn't it strange that you have a dead-end job when you're twice as smart as your boss? Your hours are long, the pay is mediocre, nobody respects your contributions, and yet you freely choose to work here. Now, this guy, if he's got any self-respect, has to come up with an answer. So he goes, that's absurd. That can't be right. No, wait, there must be a reason I put up with all of that. I work here because I love here. I love it. I love the job. Are you with me? So this is cognitive dissonance. If you want to see it in action, there's a video of Kathy Newman and uh, Jordan Peterson. If you watch it, you will just kill yourself laughing because he keeps saying things and she then has cognitive dissonance and replies with something different from what he's saying. It's about 20 minutes long. It's the funniest thing ever. Once you've watched that, you'll never see human beings in the same light ever again. So we have tricks to make sure that we are always the hero of our own story. Everything's a story, me, me, me. We filter it, we, we change it when it doesn't fit, and we end up as the hero of our own story. You're asked, wondering, why am I telling you this? Because you are now going to save mankind. In the old world, mankind did pretty damn well. Why? Because if you read books like Sapiens, they'll tell you things like, we cooperated, we had competence hierarchies. The best person at doing something told everyone else what to do. But of course, we're carnivores, so we can be a threat to each other. We can eat each other if we're chimpanzees, kill each other and stuff. But we compete as human beings, but we also collaborate. Think about a game of football. You're competing with two teams, but nobody picks up the ball and eats it. So we collaborate as well. We go with the rules. And then we have this inbuilt reboot facility. When something's really not working, then there's a riot or we, we get rid of the boss or whatever else. So as human beings, we've been very successful in the old world in acting. As a machine, 100, 1 to 10 petabytes, that's not bad for a computer, those of you from Fujitsu. Uh, processing, we're very good, but we're very sensitive to what we think the situation is. My sister and I, I have, we have a great time. So I'll use Donald Trump, because that will trigger some of you. It's going to be very funny. I studied his book when I was at university doing my MBA to read his art of the deal. We learned lots about sales, marketing, etc. I heard he was running for president and he was going to build a wall. I went, he's trying to delineate his market and he's trying to find a way of communicating it to get everyone's opinion. My sister said, he's a bloody orange racist. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, over the past four years, my sister believes he told everyone to go drink bleach. I said, no, that didn't happen. He was probably just messing around or saying, but we'll never resolve it because we have different starting conditions. You see how crazy people are? It's very funny. We run irrelevant subroutines. I don't know whether you come across this concept like religion. We can all have different religions, but if we get on a bus, the bus will still take all of us from A to B. If uh, the wind blows, all our hair will get ruffled. Are you with me? So although we have different beliefs, it has no impact at all on the underlying reality. But as human beings, we don't care as long as our story is complete have to be a real story, it just has to be a good story to keep us alive. Our architecture is compromised, data transfer is the speed of speech, which I'm trying to do really fast here, writing or transportation in the days when they used to transport clay tablets, that's as fast as we could work, but it's okay, it's the old world, we could still learn fast and the world was changing. Network uh, protocols, ego, try getting people together to do something, it was, it was my idea, I think we should do this, no, I think we should do this, we're working on a quint, I suspect this, no, I just, well, okay, then we all go quiet because we can't work out who should do what and we don't want to have a fight. Networking of human beings, nightmare, how are you going to do collaboration, upgrades, try upgrading a human being, horrible. I'm going to stop, do you recognize any of this?
Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So Absolutely. this is our problem. We're in the new world. We have these competitors. They're not other animals. They're bloody robots. Yeah, and these bloody robots, they can store data just like we can. They can process, they have good architecture, they can transfer data, they have no problem networking, upgrades, they don't complain. So, how are we as human beings going to compete? Well, you as super users on Cube, this is your mission. We want you to think about how you transfer data at the speed of thought. Do you understand why, how things like write first, talk second? Do you understand why, why we do that? Yes. That's why you get the productivity benefit from it. Do you understand why yes. the are all the same? And why we do spin casting and there's so much humor? Because we're trying to fix this one here. Do you understand this one here about learn and do, learn a little bit of learning like I'm doing now, then we'll do some work, then learning, and then doing, and then example, then points. What we're trying to do is we're trying on Cube to give mankind a chance. And you, <clears throat> so, and you, only people who stand between mankind and a horrible destiny. So, moving on. Next part of the presentation, <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Was that an orange destiny? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is you after three weeks of lockdown, okay? Now we understand how we're going to get collaboration to work. I'm going to use this model. So, I don't know whether you remember, when lockdown started, you went home, you discovered you had another half and kids. Do you remember that? And the first day or two, you sort of, ha ha, it's nice to be at home. Then after a while, you had a couple of rows because you were disturbing each other, getting on each other's nerves and doing the wrong things. Then you managed to chill out and figure out how to do it. And now this is you. Yay, wee Am I right? <laughs> this particular curve here is a particular curve which affects every time you bring people together to do anything. The model basically says you start off relatively polite, like you did with your quince, and then you start to break out and storm. But with most groups, when you bring them together, they get as far as not agreeing, but they don't think it's worth having a row, especially at work. So they just do passive aggressive, where it does their own thing. And so you never chill and the, the work is always mediocre. Okay, so when you bring your teams on cube, you want them up here. So we need to show you how to get them up through here. You worked as quints. Shortly, I'll be asking you to evaluate yourselves as quints, work out where you got stuck and see whether there are any tricks you could have used to move forward. So the model I'm going to use is a posh cocktail party. Has everyone, please shout, ever been to like a posh big cocktail party, a big party where there are people you don't know? Say yes, say no. Yes. yes. How was the emotion when you arrived? Nervous. Nervous. Daunted. Exactly. Let me in. Horrible. Where they let me in? <laughs> Where they let you in? And all of you, they're standing in little circles, going hee 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 and giggling, and you don't recognize any of them. So you head for the bar. You get the first drink. First drink at the bar is okay. Second drink at the bar mm, starts to be a bit iffy. Third drink, now you have to join a group. So you look to see which group looks the least threatening and you walk towards them. As you approach them, two steps away, either they part to let you join the group or they just ignore you, at which point you pretend you weren't going there and you go somewhere else. Have you done that? How so yeah. the battle for inclusion? The early thing if teams are going to work together is this inclusion. Do you want to be part of the group and do they want you in? And unless you can fix that, you can't get to collaboration. You can never, ever get there. You can't get to thinking together because you don't actually want to be part of each other's group. So that's inclusion. Oops, sorry. The second part is if they let you in, then the next part happens. You listen to them and they're talking. And what I'm going to ask is, Simon, what's the most boring topic you can think of? <laughs> Uh, Donald Trump. Why did he pick you, Si? <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump. You're still suffering from cognitive dissonance from what I said about Donald Trump. <laughs> well, everybody's giving me lots of, lot, lots of hints then, but no, it would normally be the weather or other weather. people's kids. People's kids. Blanca, what's the most exciting topic you can think of? Next party. <laughs> the next party. Okay, so you join the group, they're going, blah, blah, 21 years at university, blah, blah, hot and sunny, blah, blah. So you go, hey, guys, actually, after this, there's like this show, and there's an after dinner party where they're going to get music and eating and dancing. Two things happen. They either say, yeah, I went to one like that. It's great. I'm going to come to the next one. In other words, they all join in, or they look at you funnily, and they go, what about my son who's 14? Okay. In other words, that's control. For a group to stay together, people need to know that they can have control over the group, and the other group members also need to know they can fit. If the control doesn't match everyone, people withdraw, the inclusion goes, and they pretend to be there, and they're barely present. Have you seen that happening in real life? Yeah. 
Great. Yep. So we've got to fix the control. Yeah. Things like hooks and fears allow you to feel more control over stuff. Spin casting, making sure the cubicle chat is open so that you can be as rude as you like at any time. Really important. Okay. Then the next part, one person said, you know, when I was coming to this party, I was nervous too. Look, but I'm on my way up the stairs. <coughs> I tripped and I torn my trousers. Ha <laughs> ha. That's why I'm holding my leg. I'm going, ha ha ha. And everyone laughed. Me too. I was nervous. I went to a party and also I spilled everything on my head. He <laughs> And you all get open and you laugh at each other. And then it becomes a great atmosphere and you really move forward. So inclusion, control, openness. That is the spiral which gets people to the point where they can think together without their egos. And that's the model which we use. It's called Circle of Inclusion. On Cube, we have methods for doing inclusion. You would have seen some of them. You would have experienced some of them. When you went into your quints, if you didn't do these sorts of things early in your quint, you will have struggled. If you did what you do in real life and said, hello, guys. Well, okay, we've got to work on this Cube discovery. I think we should have a plan. Silence. Silence. And you didn't spin cast. You don't know if they're on your side or not. Next person talks, different topic, silence. So you need to bring them in. Say what's going to be good. Say how good it's going to be working together, etc. We give techniques like this for control. Remember, get the people to write all the ideas. Don't talk about your idea because then it's a conflict with someone else. Write all the different ways you can do the cube discovery. Then select the one which is going to work with dot voting or something like that. Openness. Make sure that if you're going to be there, some self-disclosure. Laugh at yourself. I'm always laughing at myself. I, and I am someone you can laugh at, so I suppose it's easy for me. Um, but for other people, you might need to think about things you're not supposed to agree with me on that one, uh, which you want to sort of work. <laughs> no, we do. We do. We completely concur. We completely concur. <laughs> this is your pet you're going to work on for the next few minutes. This is the curve. It goes down and then up. Forming, storming, non-forming. Dot number one. You'll get two dots in your dot voting, okay? And you'll get the two dots, which will be here, okay? Drag. Each person gets two dots. Drag the dots. To say, when we started as a team, I think we were about here. Time we delivered the cube discovery and did our action replay, I think we were here, etc. So put your dots, then discuss them if they're the same, if they're different. It's possible some people might feel they're still in a storm, but the person who won the storm with all the control might think that you're performing. So watch out for that. It's a good discussion. When you've had that discussion, this bit here will take you about two, three minutes, maybe four, max. Think about all the things you could do on Cube. Remember, you don't have a body on Cube. You can't see people's eyes, but there are many things we've learned. What could you have done differently in your quint to improve inclusion, to include control, to improve openness? And this is really where we want to focus. So the cube discovery is interesting, but I'm far more interested in how you animated yourselves as a team to function. Leo. Okay.